a good question. So this was uh, a formerly a military fire truck, uh, which was built in a time of fear, uh, because of nuclear weapons, and it's supposed to pump water or deliver water. And wanted to ch change it into a, a vehicle for hope. And one of the key things, of course, in the big yes debate, is ending trident weapons. And so that was one of the initial inspirations. And then the other thing was, the other two things we found through canvassing was, number one, people don't feel they trust any politicians anymore. And the second thing was, although they were getting information, they wanted a breadth of information. So we set this up as a national campaign, and it's carrying around about 12 different organisations' uh, material uh, across Scotland over the next six weeks. Um, what kind of response are you getting from people? Uh, really good, actually. We've only been on the road for the first few days. We came from Dundee up to Fort William and then round Sky, and obviously here and now in Forest. And people are really excited, actually. Obviously, yes, voters have made their mind up, but they don't know it brings them in. Even the no voters have come over and admired it and taken information away, especially when you get a chance to have a chat. Yeah, I mean, we, 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 we filmed you this morning already, speaking to yeah. a few people. Obviously, mixed, as you would expect. Some sure. for, some against, some not sure. But to be fair, it's been quite polite and civilised. Has that been your experience overall? Uh, incredibly, actually. I think uh, when we first went on the road, I had a little bit of uh, doubt, you know, if we we're going to have some vandalism or some trouble or some aggression towards us. It's been quite the opposite. And I think as we get closer to the vote, people want to talk more now. They want to engage. And even those who are a bit sceptical are coming over and going, is this your talk? Can we have a chat? Do you think this is typical of the way the Yes campaign is running? Uh, I wouldn't say it's typical, because <laughs> it's the only truck we know of. Um, but I think what's great about the, the, the Yes campaign is it truly is from the grassroots up. For example, this is Yes Forest, this group over here today. Uh, yes, yes Mori rather. They've organised the entire day for I us you, to I be here. To do that answer Aye, sorry. Just, but no, no, it's fine, it's fine. I mean, do you think that this kind of grassroots involvement is typical of the Yes campaign? Definitely, definitely. If you compare it to the No campaign, this is one that's come from the bottom up. And that's one person, one vote. So the more people in the grassroots movement are going up and talking to each other, knocking on doors, sharing information, sometimes sitting down and have a cup of tea with their friends and family, that makes a big difference. Do you think you can win? I mean, the polls just will not shift, will they? There seems to not be any movement, and we're only five weeks to go. Well, we both know, of course, polls shift generally in the last two, three weeks. And if you look at the, the scale of the polls we've come over the last two years, typically two years ago you're looking at 28-30% on the yes side. Now we're looking between 40 and 48 depending on which poll you, you receive. So the general shift has been from scepticism or a low percentage and now we're getting very much the neck and neck. And so we have everything to play for. What's the biggest obstacle that people raise with you to, to, to putting a cross in the yes polls? Well, if you're listening to no campaign, it'll be the pound. It's not. It's a range of issues. They want to know about pensions. They want to know about can we afford it. Uh, they want to know about um, what's going to happen for my kids, free education. NHS is very important to everyone. And as we know in the rest of the UK just now, we have had the Health and Social Care Act came in two years ago, which has brought about the start of privatisation. That's a big issue for people here in Scotland. And across the whole range of uh, the Yes campaign, from the Greens to the Scottish Socialist Party to SNP Union, or even no party at all, they all want to protect that. So that's been one big issue for people. For you, personally, is independence about improving people's economic situation, essentially a utilitarian reason for independence, yeah. or is it more philosophical? Um, it's a range of things. I think, first of all, um, I would like to see Scotland be an equal nation state to all others. And I'd also like to see Scotland rebuilt on good values. The measure of good society is looking after the most vulnerable and the children in our society. And I think Westminster over a number of years has lost sight of that. And in particular at the moment, with the welfare cuts and the war on the poor, I would suggest now's the chance for Scotland to reinvent itself. So that could be philosophical, but it's also practical. And in terms of economic terms, as we see, Scotland's one of the most prosperous countries in the world. So of course, if we can actually harness that and do some good with it, then of course it's going to be benefit for all. Thank you very much. Thank you, James. Pleasure. They're going to ask the people, is independence best? I'm thinking, Bonnie Scotland, that the answer could be yes. Yeah.